So as many of you know, anti-Trump Republican and neocon Bill Kristol decided to go after Bernie Sanders over the weekend. Now, when I saw that he actually went after Bernie, I found this odd because Bill Kristol has so thoroughly embarrassed himself by being wrong about virtually everything that if I were Bill Kristol, I would never want to tweet. I would hide my face because I've embarrassed myself so much that just by putting my name out there, I'm giving people the opportunity to make fun of me. But the guy is shameless. He doesn't care. So what he did is he decided to go after Bernie Sanders. Now, we're going to talk about what he said about Bernie Sanders and the dumb reason why he chose to go after Bernie Sanders. But I want to give you some much needed context before we get to their little squabble via Twitter. Because this is someone who, again, he has embarrassed himself so many times. And we all know back in 2016... Cable news pundits were so incredibly wrong about everything, from Bernie Sanders to Donald Trump. But Bill Kristol was more wrong than them when it comes to Donald Trump. So much so that the claims he made about Donald Trump were so preposterous. He was proven to be wrong so many times that they literally laughed at him when they were wrong themselves. Take a look. He's you, not going to be the nominee, you, you Joe. You can't you can't be to I don't see a path where Donald Trump probably doesn't become the nominee. Oh, and I, nonsense. Well, but, this but, is listen, just, but listen to this, uh, Bill. Your wishes what are ahead of your thoughts here, you know? <laughs> people I respect think uh, Trump has peaked, that a lot of people are intrigued by Trump. <laughs> I'm just repeating this so you can laugh. I believe that Donald Trump's candidacy was dealt, I've said this before and I've been wrong, but I really do believe last night could be a moment <laughs> where finally Republican voters say enough, enough with the being, in, you know, engaged. Trump's interesting. He's saying some things I like. He's sticking it to those politicians. And finally, maybe people will focus on can and should he be president of the United States? And I think Republican okay. primary voters will say no. I think Donald Trump's winning the Republican nomination honestly makes Hillary Clinton president for the next four years. So at first he says, look, Donald Trump's poll numbers may be high, but you know, he's gonna, he's gonna fade away. Then he says, all right, he's going to win the nomination, it seems like, but ultimately Hillary Clinton will win the general. He is just, he can't help himself. He's so wrong about everything. And the pretentious reasons as to why he was against Donald Trump probably was what made it the most insufferable because he kind of approached this as, well, I'm better than Donald Trump. I'm more moral. I support decorum. And he's not like the rest of us virtuous Republicans. When He's one of the worst Republicans. He's no better than Trump. You could even make the case that he's possibly worse than Donald Trump in many ways because as John Schwartz of The Intercept writes, no one outside of the inner circle of the George W. Bush administration bears greater responsibility for the war in Iraq than Bill Kristol. He co-founded a think tank whose purpose was to make the case for war, wrote a book and dozens of articles calling for an invasion, and appeared constantly on TV explaining why it had to happen. And here's a little taste of what he was saying about Iraq back when Bush was trying to make the case for it, and he was right there as a cheerleader trying to convince everyone that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. I would be shocked if we don't find weapons of mass destruction, and I think that is one of the main rationales for the war. I expect us to find them, and I think if we don't find them, that is that, that would undercut in part the rationale for the war. But obviously, that would be a that would be a great blow if, if, if Saddam has not been developing weapons of mass destruction. I would agree that if after the war we aren't treated more or less as liber a liberating force, uh, then that would also be a, a rebuke to the Bush administration, to those of us who, who counseled that this war was just and necessary. I mean, this was a, you know, I, I, I accept the possibility that I'm wrong. To follow through and be serious about helping the Iraqi people rebuild their country and about helping promote a decent democratic government in Iraq, it would be a much less morally um, satisfying and, uh, and and fully defensible uh, war if we don't follow through as we should. And I'm happy to be held to a moral standard. I, I ask that it be a serious moral standard. Turns out he was wrong, unsurprisingly. Now, he was wrong about the Iraq war, and him being wrong on that had catastrophic consequences. He was then wrong about Donald Trump. Doesn't necessarily have negative implications, but nonetheless, it shows that he doesn't necessarily have his finger on the pulse of America. But I mean, he's been wrong time and again and again. So in a normal world, cable news pundits wouldn't take him seriously. They would stop bringing him on their program. But nonetheless, this grifter is still around. And since he still is legitimate because he's being propped up by the mainstream media, well, he decided to attack 
Bernie Sanders, and he tweeted out a hit piece that the New York Times recently published where they basically implied that he was a communist sympathizer because he tried to foster dialogue between the United States and countries like the Soviet Union. And Bernie also vociferously opposed the Vietnam War. And in response to this article, Bill Kristol tweeted out, Never Sanders. Now, first of all, I'm sure you had the same thought that I did when I saw his tweet here. Why would he think that anyone cares what he has to say? I get that cable news pundits like to bring him on. I mean, maybe they do it because he's a good punching bag, so he generates ratings in that regard. But nonetheless, you are not legitimate. You have zero credibility, Bill. You've been wrong about everything over the course of the last 20 years. So why would you think we care at all about what you have to say? So the way that I wanted Bernie to respond, and I'm sure the way that we all wanted him to respond, is exactly the way Bernie Sanders responded. He responded saying, have you apologized to the nation for your foolish advocacy of the Iraq war? I make no apologies for opposing it. Bill Kristol then responded to that saying, nope, I dislike quasi-Stalinist demands for apologies. I've defended and will defend my views on Iraq and Syria and Milosevic and the Soviet Union and more as you defend yours. How about a real debate on U.S. foreign policy? I'll ask for no apologies. On a campus this fall? So first of all, like clockwork, any time a conservative is name-dropped or acknowledged by a lefty, what is their first go-to reaction? Debate me. Debate me. Debate me. It's, it's so odd that this phenomenon is emerging. Like, I name-dropped H.A. Goodman a couple of months ago on the podcast, and he responded essentially by saying, debate me. It's like they keep saying, debate me, debate me, debate me. And all that this does, and I think what they know this accomplishes, is it gives them credibility. It gets us to recognize them tacitly as legitimate, honest actors by engaging in a debate with them. But the reason why lefties won't debate if they choose not to, like Bernie, I'm assuming he wouldn't want to debate Bill Crystal. but the reason why he doesn't debate you, Bill Crystal, is because you have no credibility. I'm not opposed to debating right-wingers. Like, I will be actually doing a debate with a right-winger this week, and I don't know if I'm allowed to reveal that, but I engage with people who I believe make arguments in good faith that they actually believe, but to debate someone who's a grifter, to debate someone that's constantly wrong and just says the things that they say to garner attention, that doesn't accomplish anything. So notice how the people who are the biggest idiots on the right, they're the loudest when it comes to debates. Debate me, debate me, please give me your attention. Fuck off. <laughs> that's, that's what I say to that. Now, another thing that struck me with his response was, no, I haven't apologized for the Iraq war. I've defended my views. And he says, I dislike quasi-Stalinist demands for apologies. Why is Bernie Sanders telling you that you should apologize quasi-Stalinist? What does that even mean? Do you even know what that means? I don't think he does. I don't think he actually has a concept of what he's trying to communicate by saying that. He just wants to take a jab at Bernie and say, well, look, Stalin's a communist. You're a communist. <laughs> he probably thinks Bernie's a communist. So, gotcha. This is so mind-numbingly stupid. Bill, what you advocated for was one of the biggest, if not the biggest, foreign policy blunders in the history of our country. You advocated for something that led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of people, that costs our country trillions of dollars. And for you to say, oh, you know, I'm unapologetic, I'm still defending my views. You have no credibility. And even if these news pundits bring him on their programs because it's funny, you know, he is often made fun of, rightfully so, I think on the left and the right, stop doing that because you're propping up and legitimizing this figure who has zero credibility. Nobody takes Bill Crystal seriously. Lefties don't take him seriously. Republicans don't take him seriously. But yet, because he's an anti-Trump right-winger, there's this weird niche market in mainstream media where they just bring on these anti-Trump Republicans because they like to hear them talk about how bad Donald Trump is. You're arguably worse than Donald Trump, Bill Crystal. You were in favor of the Iraq War. You advocated for death and destruction. And Donald Trump is doing the same thing. He's propping up the military-industrial complex. He's increasing drone strikes. But still, with everything Donald Trump has done, I don't think 
It has amounted to the damage caused by the Iraq war yet. Now, maybe give him time and, you know, that could possibly transpire. Maybe he invades Iran and it's worse. But as we speak right now, you can make the case that you've done more damage than Donald Trump, Bill Crystal. So nobody cares about what you have to say. You have no credibility. You've been wrong about everything. And you have consistently made predictions that have not come to fruition. You're constantly wrong. You don't have your finger on the pulse of America, and mainstream news pundits probably only bring you on because they like the response that you generate. People make fun of you because they know you're a joke. So just do yourself a favor and do all of us a favor and go away because nobody takes you seriously, Bill. You could support the Humanist Report at Patreon dot com slash humanist report but trust me i'd have way more supporters on patreon if that was my podcast sad <laughs>